Hello everyone, this is Ashley Tucker for My Favorite Things. Today I have something a little bit different to share with you because I'm not making a card today. Instead, I made a stocking stuffer. So I've seen these chocolate slider things on Pinterest and I really wanted to give them a try. Now, you don't have to use chocolate for your slider if you don't want to. You can use all sorts of different things. You just have to make sure that they fit in the box that you create. I'm going to use chocolate today, but I have seen other people do hot chocolate pouches or other different kinds of candies or even gift cards for really small versions of this. I decided to use two chocolate bars for my slider because two is definitely better than one when it comes to chocolate. So I measured around those two chocolate bars to figure out what size paper I needed for my box. And it turned out that I needed a piece that was eight inches by eight and three quarters inches. And then I needed to score it. Using my score buddy, I scored the paper at the three quarter inch mark and the four inch mark. And then I flipped it around and scored it at those same measurements on the opposite side. Now, my score buddy is the mini one, so it's not super big, so this paper was just a little bit too big for it. So in order to fully score along that eight inches, I had to flip the paper around and score the bottom the other way. Once I had all of the score marks, I used my bone folder and I folded each of those scored edges and it creates this little box shape. In order to turn this into a slider later, I'm going to need a hole at the top on both sides of the box. So I used a ruler to mark where the center of both sides of the top is with a pencil. And then I took a hole punch and I punched where that pencil mark is. And you don't have to stress too much about these holes being perfectly centered, just get it as best as possible. Next, I picked out a piece of patterned paper from the Cheerful Plaid Pattern Paper Pad. That was a mouthful. <laughs> and I'm going to be cutting a bookmark out of that. To make this bookmark, I used one of the dies from the Tall Tag Duo die set. I cut the pattern paper with it, and then I also cut a piece of red cardstock with it. And then I took those two pieces and I adhered them back to back to make a sturdy bookmark. Next, I grabbed one of the dies from the Slimline Double Stitched Rectangle Die Set, and I'm cutting that out of some red cardstock. This is the same red cardstock that I used to make the bookmark. It's called Red Hot. I cut this rectangle twice out of that cardstock, and I'm going to use those two rectangles to make a pouch to hold my bookmark. To make that pouch, I took one of the rectangles and I figured out how long it needs to be to fit on the front of my box, added a pencil mark so I knew where to trim it, and then I grabbed the other rectangle, and this one I needed to be tall enough where you can just see the bookmark peeking out of the top. So I figured out how tall that was gonna be, added a pencil mark, and trimmed it down. Off camera, I used the same red hot cardstock to cut a bunch of strips that are a quarter inch thick, and I'm going to glue those around three sides of the front of my pouch to create some dimension. I don't need a whole lot of dimension here. If I did, I would just use foam tape. Instead, I'm using these strips because I need just enough dimension to be able to slide my bookmark in easily and for it to not fall out. Adding just one strip to each of those three sides wasn't quite enough to mention I needed just a smidge more, so I added two strips to each of those three sides and that was perfect. Once that glue was dry enough, I added more glue to the back of each of those strips and then I adhered it together to the other rectangle that I made for the back and that makes my pouch. I also made sure that when I adhered these together that I covered up the edge of the bottom rectangle where I trimmed it so that the stitching goes all the way around. To add some decoration to my bookmark and my slider, I'm using the Happy Llama Days stamp set. It has these really cute little llamas in it that are Christmas themed and I thought that they'd be perfect for this project. I stamped those with a Copic Friendly Black ink onto some Nina Classic Crest white cardstock. Now, for this llama that's going to go on the bookmark, I wanted to stamp a sentiment with it. I picked out the sentiment from the Itty Bitty Holiday stamp set and I put it right underneath the llama and stamped it with the same black ink. I thought that the Be Joyful sentiment went really well with this little llama. I think he looks kind of joyful, so I thought it was perfect. 
I did take the same die that I used to create my bookmarks and I cut this out. It doesn't have to be perfect because I'm going to be trimming down the top and the bottom later and just putting the center onto the bookmark. As you can see, I'm coloring this in with my Copic markers. I didn't want to get too much into the coloring on this because I did keep it really, really simple. I didn't even do blending for a lot of this, especially those really small areas on the scarf. I just added the one color. That being said, I did show all of the marker caps off to the side so that you could see the colors that I'm using. For this next llama that I'm going to be using on the front of the chocolate slider, I didn't actually leave the coloring in the video for him because I colored him exactly the same way as I did the other llama. I wanted to try to use all of the same colors that I used on the other llama image on this one so that the whole project really goes together and coordinates. And the way that I actually picked out these colors was by looking at the pattern paper that I used on the bookmark and trying to pull colors from that. I think that using the same colors throughout your whole project really makes it cohesive and makes it look better. While I finish up the coloring, I do want to mention a few things about this project. I know it's a little bit complicated for a stocking stuffer, but I really wanted to give you a lot of different ideas that you could use all together or separately depending on how much you want to do. For example, I'm including a bookmark with mine, but that's something you totally could skip and just do the slider. And later on, I'm actually going to also be adding a place for a gift card. And that's another thing that you can skip and don't have to add. I just really wanted to give you a lot of ideas that you could then take and make your own. All right, so once the coloring was done, I used the coordinating die for the larger stamped image. And then for the other one, I trimmed the bottom and the top using my paper trimmer. I then took that and I adhered it to the front of the bookmark with some liquid adhesive. And because I used the same die, the edges line up really nicely. I used a white gel pen and I added some details to the llama. And then I grabbed some of the leftover strips that I had from when I made the pouch and I'm going to add a strip to the bottom edge and a strip to the top edge. And I think that that really frames the whole thing in nicely. Having just the white paper there looked a little bit unfinished, but once I added that red strip, it looked so much better. Now it's time to start assembling everything. So I grabbed the pouch that I made to hold my bookmark and I used my tape runner on the back and I'm going to adhere it to what is going to be the front of my slider box. And I definitely tested this pouch out to make sure that my bookmark fits in it before adhering it to the box. Here is the chocolate that I'm going to be using for my slider. I really love this chocolate, especially the bacon one, which might be a little bit weird, but I'm a little bit weird, so that's okay. I added some adhesive tape to one of the flaps of the box so that I could put it together. You definitely want to use a really strong adhesive so that the box won't come apart once it's put together. I grabbed my chocolate and a long piece of red ribbon, placed that ribbon inside of the box and then the chocolate on top of that. And then I fold the ribbon over so that it's on top of the chocolate as well, so that I have the chocolate in between the two strings, kind of like a swing. While that's in place, I removed the backing paper from my adhesive, and then I very, very carefully folded this together to form the box shape. I didn't get this fold completely perfect. It's a little bit off on that one side, but because I used such a strong adhesive, I can't really fix it, but it's okay because it's not that bad. Next, you're going to take the ends of the ribbon that are hanging out of the top of the box and you're going to thread them through the holes at the top of the box. This will create your slider and it will also make sure that the chocolate can't slide out of the bottom of the box. You do have to make sure to thread the ribbon into the holes in the correct direction or else the slider won't work. Right here, I'm tying the top of the ribbon into a bow, but later on, I do decide that I don't want it to be a bow. I didn't like the look of it with the bookmark because I'm going to have a bow at the top of the bookmark. And I just thought it was too many bows, so I end up trimming this later and you'll see when I do that. But for now, there's a bow and the slider is actually done at this point. So we're just going to decorate now. 
I stamped a sentiment to go with the llama on the front of the box. This sentiment is from the Itty Bitty Holiday stamp set, and I cut that sentiment out with one of the skinny strips dies. I used foam tape on the back of the llama image as well as on that sentiment to give it some dimension, and I popped that up right onto my bookmark pouch. After adding those two things, I thought that the front of the pouch looked a little bit empty. There was just way too much negative space. So I decided to fill it up as nicely as possible with some sequins and embellishments. At first, I just added some clear sequins with liquid adhesive. Later on, you'll see I come back and add some embellishments. I used a white gel pen to add highlights and details onto this image. Just like I did with the other llama, I added some dots onto the blanket on his back. I also added dots to one of the presents and stripes to one of the presents. And then I also added a few stripes onto the scarf on the llama. And I really like all of these added little details. To finish up my bookmark, I'm going to add some embroidery floss to the top to create a bow. Normally, I'm not a big fan of bows at the top of my bookmarks. I'd much rather have a hanging string tied off at the end. But that hanging string at the top of the bookmark just didn't look very good when this was in the pouch on top of the slider. So I did end up tying it into a bow, but I did make sure it was a loose bow so that when the recipient wants to use the bookmark, they can easily undo the bow. Next, I grabbed another piece of patterned paper, this time from the Cool Collab patterned paper pad, and I cut that down to three and a quarter by three inches. And I'm going to use this to create a really simple gift card holder. I'm going to score along three of those edges at the half inch mark to create a pocket. And I'm going to use some scissors and cut out the square that's created by the two score marks on two of the corners. After cutting out both of those corners, I'm also going to add some diagonal cuts, which are just going to help me be able to fold this in much easier. Like I mentioned earlier, this is one of the things that you could totally choose to leave off of your stocking stuffer. If you don't want to put a gift card, you could just have the chocolate and the bookmark or any combination and just make it your own. I just wanted to give lots of options. I used my bone folder and I folded along all of those score lines and then I made sure that my gift card fit inside the pouch. It's important that you check that because if it doesn't fit in there, then it's going to be a problem if you adhere it onto your slider. Once I knew that my gift card was going to fit, I added the strong adhesive to each of those flaps and then I stuck it right onto the back of the slider. And honestly, this is meant to be a stocking stuffer, but with the addition of the gift card on the back, this could be given as just a small gift to somebody, and I think that that would be really nice. I used a glitter brush to add some sparkle to my sentiment, and then I added some snowflake embellishments to the front of the pouch. And this is where I decided I didn't like that bow at the top because it was just one too many bows, so I snipped the top of the ribbon and just left it like that. I thought that there was just a little bit too much space at the top of my slider above the pouch, so I decided to stamp another sentiment from the same stamp set, and I think that that fills in that space really nicely, and I also went over that with the glitter brush. And that finishes up the stocking stuffer, and here's a look at everything all together. You can see how that bookmark goes in and out really easily, and then you can see all I have to do is pull that ribbon and the chocolate comes right out. I absolutely love the way that this came out. I think that it was really fun to make, and it's going to be a really, really nice stocking stuffer for somebody. Now, just so you know, the Very Crafty Holiday Series is going on right now for My Favorite Things. This video is part of that series, so make sure you check out the description down below for all of the information on that. Thank you so much for watching today. I hope you really enjoyed this project and that it gave you some ideas, and I'll see you next time.